Hey, what's up, guys? Sean Leward, Silverhound. Um, we're a day late, but that's okay. We got the pocket change market report for March 5th, 2024. This would actually be reading March 6th. So a little bit of a typo in there, but still the inf information just as relevant, very up to date as we take a look at some of the, uh, the errors and varieties that people have found out in the wild and that have been sold on eBay within the last 48 to 72 hours. Um, it's a great kind of like overall look to see, you know, how things are going out there. You know, if you could find them and change, are they still very valuable? And, um, you know, we've seen this particular segment of the market, you know, they have, um, they have their waves, uh, but nothing really too turbulent. You know, I, I would say for the most part that a lot of folks, you know, have been doing really well, um, selling these pieces on the secondary market. And that's great news. Um, it's going to be a way to, um, to get into not only the hobby, but again, a reselling at a very minimal cost, you know, because a lot of these are found going through pocket change, coin roll hunting, um, on certain occasions. And there's quite a few of these. Uh, they do pop up at coin shops and shows on eBay. You could also cherry pick right off of eBay and then resell it, especially if the uh, the listing title is not very good. Um, so there's a wide array of different uh, uh, ways and methods that you could obtain these coins for not only your collection, but also to resell and make that money. Uh, there's a lot of people I know that do this as a full-time gig, and they do very well at it too. Um, so we're going to take a look and see uh, how things are going here. A few little things that I always bring up when we do the pocket change market report, we don't talk about graded coins, uh, graded grading, any coin actually costs money. All right. And if we don't need to grade coins because they speak for themselves, keep the money in your pocket. Don't encapsulate these. It may or may not necessarily add value to the coin. So please do keep that in mind. And the photos you're going to see here today on this report are 100% original to the seller's listings. We didn't juice or doctor or modify any of these photos to make them look better. You are going to get the best and worst that eBay has to offer, but also illustrate where that bar is set for your photography skills. Because, you know, taking pictures of coins can be a little bit challenging depending on the lighting, um, how well the camera on maybe your smartphone does, you know, at actually getting in close to details. Uh, you guys definitely need to know what the limitations are and what is expected of you when you go to resell these. All right, so um, we do have a little bit of a um, whatnot calendar of events. Um, we just had the Tuesday show a couple days ago. That has come and gone. However, we have this upcoming Friday show, which is tomorrow. It's going to be March 8th, 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, this is called the Road to 10,000 Followers Classic Dance Go Album Giveaway. We have a couple really nice albums that not only we're going to sell, but also give away as well. Uh, albums that traditionally sell for $40 to $60 online, we are going to be giving them away for free. Uh, and not only that, it's uh, also a big U.S. type coin collection. We also have some unseen early exonumia type coinage and um, different types of uh, uh, good for tokens and, and a lot of early turn of the century stuff. When I mean turn of the century, 1900, somewhere around there. Um, a lot of great rarities that, that we just don't see that often. Uh, I personally invite you guys to come on down, check things out. We will not have a show uh, after Friday for about a week and a half. All right. So um, yeah, it's going to be uh, quiet uh, as we will be at the ANA Money Show in Colorado. And if you're going to be at that show, come on down. Come meet us. Uh, we're also going to be with some of the other uh, industry um, leaders and dealers and things like that. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So we look forward to seeing you. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into these listings straight from eBay. Um, starting out with this one, this is a 2021 Tuskegee Airman Quarter. All right, this one is a Philadelphia produced piece. You can see with the P mint mark on the obverse where it came from. And uh, this is one right here that, um, you know, I would say not that a lot of people overlook this, 
but there is a certain burning building strike through that really took over the search for these coins but we haven't seen too many of those on the open market i think a lot of them uh ended up getting bought out in the last uh i would say 12 months or so um so you know th those have been kind of quiet on the market uh recently just because there's not a whole lot out, out there for availability um <clears throat> but please do realize that this particular error exists out there now what are we looking at it's going to be the die chips that form right on the uh, the goggles of the airman right there um this one right here is entitled by the seller as the unicorn horn die chip um now i've seen die chips on top of the goggles that actually reach to the words uh two wars and um this one's big enough but not quite big enough to where it's beginning to attach this to other devices um, but still very impressive. This one ended up selling for $23. I know there are some bigger ones that sell for a lot more money. I've seen these go up to $40 to $60, depending on the size of that die chip. And for whatever reason, this is a very weak spot on those dies um, that warrant an extra look when you do come across them. Now, as of right now, we're only seeing these on Philadelphia minted coins. So for you folks on the West Coast, I do apologize. I'm part of that group as well. We're just not seeing things like this. But if you're on the East Coast of the U.S., you know, this is something to keep an eye out for. Uh, the next one that we have here, actually, um, th this is quite neat. 1972D Lincoln Memorial Send. This is a double struck coin. Um, this particular one right here features dual dates, as you can see there on the obverse um, 72D. You can also see the 72 on that off-center struck portion, which is roughly 90% off-center. Um, this particular piece, and I just noticed it, I think they used a different reverse off another coin because the 72D is copper, but they inadvertently used uh, a completely different date of coin because that one is uh, not only a much smaller off-center struck portion of it, but it's also a copper-coated zinc in. All right, so this is the photos that was given to us from this listing. Um, this particular one sold for $54.99. And I would say, you know, when you come across things like this that might be a little bit uncertain, I would certainly drop a line to the seller just to make sure that they didn't accidentally use uh, a reverse image from a completely different coin. Um, you know, this person does have a case. If it turns out that the coin is not as described, they could send it back for a full refund. Here's a 1956D. This is a great D to search through. Um, this is actually a dual event coin. Now, without getting too close to certain areas, this one is a BIE die chip. Um, you know, you can see the die chip formation between the B and E and Liberty. All right. So it's collectible based off of that. But on this particular coin, and by the way, it's a really nice shape. I'd say it's a really solid XF condition uh, piece here, which is still very much collectible by a lot of folks who are enthusiasts of this series and varieties. So this one is actually a well-known RPM, uh, which is a repunched mint mark. This particular one is RPM number one. It's got the BIE die chip. And as a result, it's sold for $19.75. So that's a pretty good solid sale there. Uh, this uh, particular RPM is quite common. The secondary Denver Midmark is punched west of the primary. Um, and it's one of the strongest RPMs that you will ever come across in this series. The next one that we have here is uh, what we affectionately refer to as a peekaboo off-center struck coin. Um, the reason why we call it that is the off-center portion of the coin. You can see the front part. The front face of whatever uh, figure is on there in this case our good old president jefferson um you can see the front of his face now um it's collectible because of that uh but ideally uh someone that collects into these they'd rather have a full date because these are collected by date and that's where your strongest premiums are going to be at now this one right here is sold for 16 dollars with two total bids uh, this one is off-center, out-of-collar by about 60%, if I had to guess. And um, it's a very nice condition coin, too. 
Uh, the next one that we have here, this is much more like it, and one that would certainly command all the uh, the market money. 1985 P Jefferson Nickel. This one actually has a full readable date and mint mark. Again, very relevant to a collector. Uh, this one is off center by about 50, 55 percent, somewhere in that general area. Um, the coin's in pretty good shape. It does feature a few little trivial carbon spots and uh, deeper nicks and contact marks. Um, probably not too big of a deal. This one right here is sold for $34.99. Um, and that is typically what these fall into as far as price wise. $30 to $40 is the normal for these. Um, so here's the coin right here, ladies and gentlemen, that it turned out that someone cherry picked this one for dirt cheap. And this is a coin that customarily sells for about $80 to $100. Now here's kind of the the rub to this one. This was sold by a well-known dealer and they threw it up for $15, buy it now. Um, and you know, even has a, a little bit of shipping uh, attached to it, I believe. Uh, here, there, it's $15 with free shipping, but whatever the case is, this is a steal and a half. Um, this is a 1970D Washington Quarter. Um, this one, as you can tell, uh, exhibits a very weak strike to the coin, both on the obverse and reverse of the coin. Um, this is actually one that I've seen quite a bit, and a lot of you as well. This is a quarter that was struck on uh, what we call dime thickness stock. Um, so the quarter planchet uh, was uh, inadvertently uh, punched out of a rolled thin sheet of dime thickness stock instead of quarter thickness. Uh, a little bit skinnier uh, in comparison. You know, we've all had a quarter and a dime in our hand before, so we know what the difference of thickness is from one to the other. So because of how thin it is, it's not going to fully struck with the uh, with the standard pressurization that the mid presses are calibrated to for that particular denomination. Uh, and as a result, you're going to get a general weakness. Now, one of the things that you're going to do is simply weigh the coin. Um, this particular one weighed 4.27 grams, all right, which is quite a bit underweight for what it's supposed to be. Um, but just judging from the look of this coin, again, this is an eighty to a hundred dollar coin uh, every day of the week, if it's listed properly as being struck on dime thickness stock. Um, I think it was just an oversight, but you know, someone came in and they snagged it within moments of when it was listed. This one sold for fifteen bucks. Uh, so there you go. So and that, that again, that's how you could cherry pick these on eBay. Um, someone did ask me, well, you know, if I sell on eBay, you know, you could cherry pick on the same platform too, um, because I don't want to be cherry picked on. I'm like, yeah, it can happen, especially if you, uh, if you don't put all the information that you need to in that listing before you sell it, it, it is a possibility. And there you go. Case in point, someone, uh, made out like a bandit, either they added something really epic to their collection or they cherry pick something that they know they could sell for a lot more money. And not only that, this coin looks mid state. And the last few examples that were graded by NGC or Annex um, with the dime thickness stock at error attribution have actually sold for a few hundred dollars. So, you know, there is that too. You could send this off to a grading company, you could come back like a 62 or 63 grade based off of what I'm seeing here. And that's going to be a home run. And that's kind of how we do it here in the industry. Um, and here's a, another coin that I did highlight on my last PCMR because the seller, TLC Coins, has a number of these in stock. This is a 1972 Lincoln Memorial Cent. This is the FS108 in the Cherry Picker's Guide. This is a really major doubled die obverse. Um, and when we look up close, and by the way, the coin is beautiful. It's like from a fresh BU roll. This one right here shows really strong doubling on not only the date, but Liberty. But most importantly, check out the motto, In God We Trust, has some of the craziest doubling. All right, so uh, premium full red BU specimens of these double dies of 1972 command quite a bit of a premium. Uh, this one right here sold for $133.90, and uh, that is kind of like the normal price for these. Uh, the more desirable doubled dies for the for the date 
um, command many times more than this. Uh, so um, it's it's one of the marquee dates to look through every time you guys come across the 1972 Philly Lincoln. Always check up close to make sure you're not throwing back a really valuable um, sought after piece like this FS 108. Uh, and speaking of sought after, it's always good to see coins like this ungraded, okay? Which, you know, this one right here ended up selling for a full market, um, even though it's not in PCGS or NGC plastic. It's the 1942 over 41 variety Mercury Dime. Um, and the coin is phenomenal. It's a really solid XF40 condition, if maybe 45 um, you know, very nice. Uh, it looks problem free from what I could see. A few little nicks, especially on the reverse, like right there next to the U and United, um, is the most glaring one. But again, that's not going to disqualify the coin from straight grading if it was sent to a grading company. Um, this one right here, of course, that that's what we have. Uh, it looks like a friggin' zip code, uh, one nine four one two, uh, wherever that may be. But um, this, in any event, did sell for $670.25 with 36 very strong bids. Um, this is all the market money. Um, even though it's not on a holder, it didn't miss anything. Uh, XF40s typically sell in the $650 to $700 range all day long. And here's a 2004 P Candy Half Dollar. This is one of our one of our glorious, not intended for circulation dates. So you could have only bought this direct from the mint. Um, they stopped making these for circulation back in 2002. Uh, so this one, you can see some splotches on both sides of the coin. This this is actually a strike through um, by a very thin layer of grease that was on the die. So when these coins were struck, there was a little grease on the die and they kind of like starbursted out toward the edge. And that's kind of the effect that you got here on this one. Um, not incredibly wildly valuable, but pretty neat. There are some more extreme examples I've seen uh, beyond this one. Uh, and it sold for $5.20 with a couple bits. Uh, here's a, our first, I guess you could say, lot of the night uh this is a 10 pack of 1998 and 2000 wide am reverse lincoln sense in varying degrees of grade um we all know the wide ams uh, these coins were struck from 98 to 2000 inadvertently by using proof reverse dies um so if you're able to find one with a pretty nice size gap between a and m and america you have one of these varieties so this listing is for five 2000s and five 98s, the two more common dates. So this 10 pack sold for $35 with three bids. I'd say there's a lot of opportunity to at least double your money by buying this lot. I would say you're probably close to a triple up on a lot of occasions as these coins typically sell for about 10 to $12 on the open market if sold uh, individually. And uh, here's a really nice early classic 1817 coronet head styled one cent large cent or, you know, just large cent, I guess. Um, so this one right here is the 15 stars obverse, which is a type of uh, design type. Uh, but this one also, it's not reflected on the photos provided by the seller, has a 40 degree rotated reverse. Now, I just want to let you guys know on these much earlier kind of like federal age of coins having a rotated reverse or rotated dies error is actually quite common uh most of them do have rotated die type of errors um but you know we we gotta keep in mind that this was kind of normal back in the day um there were some examples even that had 180 degrees all the way around rotated dies and uh sometimes it doesn't add a premium uh this coin sold for 61 dollars at 55 cents with four total bids. We uh, also bear witness to a couple of really nice looking Canadian cents. Okay, um, error collectors uh, across the border are very impassioned when it comes to their own country's errors um, because there's just not a whole lot of them out there. And, um, you know, they all tend to trade and, um, and buy and sell and all that um in their country you know we don't see a whole lot of them here in the united states this is a 1981 canada cent uh it's off center by about 15 percent 
or it's really nice you know nice condition coin this one sold for $38.25 with 13 bids and the same seller also had a 1980 all right this one uh, even more bright and brilliant than the previous example um, and this one right here is off center by about 10% I would say it's got a really nice cupping type of deal to it as well this one sold for $33.25 and that's with 15 bids Here's our next lot. This is actually, you know, kind of kind of neat. You know, it uh, personally, I I might have taken a flyer on something like this. This is a lot of fourteen Jefferson nickels, all with some sort of mint error on them. Okay, so if you look at the top row, you you do see a few examples of nickels with uh, uh, curved clips or sheet clips on there. Nothing too crazy. Those are typically like a five to eight dollar coin per piece. Um, you also have some strike throughs. You have some lamination errors as well on a number of these other coins. Um, so, you know, it's it's like the, these are all things that are quite common on these coins, but certainly elevate the, the value of each coin independently. Now, you can't really ask a boatload of money for each coin with a lamination or strike through because they're quite common on, you know, earlier dated Jefferson Nichols. Um, so if you were going to consider buying this to resell, you know, you can put them up at, for like $7.99 with free shipping. You know, you probably profit about, I don't know, like $5 per coin times 14, you know, do the math. Um, the, this 14 coin lot sold for $38.77 with a couple bids. So there were a few people interested but you know the the real money is made is when you sell these individually you know you could probably almost three x your money with this lot here although it doesn't look like it it doesn't look very special but you can um talk about holy smokes a really tough quarter to find off center is this 2002 mississippi it's a Denver at that too. This is a really tough one, guys. And, you know, what we do know from people that collect any sort of mint error on statehood quarters is that they're trying to find one for every state if they can, one for every Philadelphia and Denver produced for each state. That's quite the undertaking. Um, this one right here, one of the toughest, uh, this particular one ended up selling for $21.12. It's a very well circulated coin and that's kind of what suppressed the value on this one. $21, no slouch at all. I mean, that's a uh, that's a really good amount of money for this type of coin. Uh, here's another lot here of three Roosevelt dimes with uh, pretty significant cheek clips or curved clips on there. And uh, I like the dates too. We have a 65, 66, and 67. You have all three of them here. Um, and you know, when you look at the reverse, the coins are actually quite nice. Uh, they are all BU condition, um, from just, you know, what I see here with my own two eyeballs and, uh, you know, the three coin lot sold for $19 and 99 cents. You know, I don't think there was really a whole lot of room to make a ton of money reselling these individually. Um, but you could add a really nice three pack to your collection, you know, and then someone will buy it. It's reasonably priced. And, um, you know, it's, you know, it's a pretty good deal. Well, we didn't have much in the way of currency, but how about this one? Uh, this is a 1977 $5 bill and, uh, it features a gutter fold there on the right side. Um, uh, so a gutter fold is simply just a wrinkle in the subject sheet that never got stretched out prior to the print. And, um, this one's pretty nice. It's very crisp. It's in a pretty decent shape as well. Nice solid VF body of uh, paper, vivid inks. Check out the reverse. Obviously on the left side, you don't see the gutter because the, the paper was stretched out before the reverse was printed. All right. And the reverse is always printed first on a subject sheet. Uh, so this one here sold for $99 and 95 cents, um, which is one of the higher sales of a gutter fold that I've seen in a while, especially with one single gutter. Um, these tend to fall in that 40 to $60 range, depending on the bill. Um, so this one definitely overachieved a little bit, but it's good to see very nice, healthy market for this particular paper money error. 
Yeah, not the best looking photos. Uh, very out of focus and pixelated. 2023 Lincoln Shield set. Now we know what we're looking at here, folks. This is indeed one of the extra V varieties that everybody's been clamoring for for the last six months. Um, another one sold here. And uh, this one actually did very well. Um, we're beginning to see less of the jemmies that are being sold, this one included. And, um, you know, here's a close-up. You're looking for that little V-notch at the base of Lincoln's bust, uh, that truncated area where VDB is. That's Victor David Brenner's initials, the um, designer of the Lincoln Cent offers. Uh, so this particular one right here, folks, is sold for $58 with 22 bits, um, which is a lot higher than I've seen, uh, especially a coin in this condition where you know there has a few contact marks looking at the uh, out-of-focus photos, typically sell for $30, $40. So this one, again, a little bit more overachieving. Um, we've seen graded sales of mid-state 65 to 68 coins still doing okay uh, the lower graded ones are beginning to kind of retreat in value they're not as profitable as they once were maybe a few months ago um we we constantly see a lot of really phenomenal um broad struck errors okay these were struck out of collar so the collar malfunctioned it didn't keep the coin in the striking chamber um during the strike uh, obviously because the you know the metal flow went outwards and made the coin a lot bigger than it should be uh this one is very they, they call this a uh, kind of like a, a bullseye large broad strike because it's centered um you know and this is a copper coated zinc so you do have that fractured pull away of the um the, the copper layer coming off of lincoln's face which is very normal kind of gives it a double profile look um, this one right here sold for $34.99. All right. So that's uh, a really, really nice price tag on this one. And uh, again, it's because it's well centered and um, the coin is in phenomenal shape. All right. So uh, the seller of this 1996 $50 bill didn't have full front and back photos, but they did kind of like, you know, kind of like the left side of the front, the right side of the back, things like that. Um, you're going to note that this one is missing the overprint. Um, the, uh, the serial numbers, the district seals, they're gone on this one. So uh, where'd it go, actually? It went on the back of the notes, uh, right over the first initial print. So the subject sheet was upside down. Those silly BEP employees. Um, it was upside down, and they, they printed the overprint on the backs of the notes. All right, so here's the right side where 50 is, is typically where the green seal is. Guess what? I don't see it. I don't see a serial number anywhere on this one either. When we look at the back, boom, there you go. It's on the back. Again, those silly BEP employees, they, they, they know how to make a really nice wild error. Um, this is one of the more desirable error types. Uh, actually, I've never owned one of these in any denomination where the overprint is on the back of the note and not on the front. Um, this one right here ended up selling for $1,209.11 with 12 bids. And I'm willing to be a betting man that we don't see this particular error on 50s. And that kind of, kind of, I don't know, uh, corroborates the dollar value that this thing sold for um, because that seems like the type of money that this would sell for if it was in a graded holder in a large public auction like heritage auctions but on ebay out of all places twelve hundred dollars twelve bids you had every currency uh nut on ebay looking after this thing and they ended up you know just really really putting this one on full blast and it it sold for all the money is it worth it if there's only one or two of them known yeah it's worth it uh a couple buffalo nickels here's a really nice pleasing 1921 s buffalo nickel uh it seems to be in great shape too i'd say it's a really really good kind of like um xf40 it's got a full horn there on the buffalo on the reverse um and this one is promoted as being a two feather uh but you can see part of a third feather on there so i'd say it's like a two and a half feather 
but there is a two feather buffalo um, attributed in the cherry pickers guide. This particular one ended up selling for uh, $225 because of the grade and because of it of how scarce this date is. This is one of the more scarcer ones out there. Um, yeah, not a great looking Lincoln scent. Uh, th this one is, has stains and rust stuff all over it. 1945, but it's got a delamination on the reverse. All right, so even uh, even the ugly the ugly coins still do sell. Uh, this one sold for twenty dollars and fifty five cents. If you can believe that, um, it did. Uh, and you know, it's a really large um, delamination too um, that goes from one rim to the other. So it's a it's a full encompassing one. That's probably what kept the price tag pretty high on it. Um, another great one here, off center struck Lincoln Memorial scent. Um, you know, it's got no readable date. It's fine. You know, I guess, but you notice how flat that off center part is, uh, right on the rim. Uh, I'm willing to bet that this one was probably, uh, geez, what do you call it? A, um, not a saddle strike, but there was probably a couple of coins that were right next to each other or blanks that struck so you had the metal flow press against each coin to really flatten out that edge okay and that's what happened this thing is uh it's pretty crazy it's a very nice beautiful red brown patina which i really love and it's problem free it's got no carbon spots or anything on it this one right here sold for 23 dollars and 45 cents with 12 total bids again it's just a true beauty uh, here's another Buffalo nickel, not as impressive. This one is, uh, this one is the 21S. The previous one was a 21S. This one is a two feather, um, uh, variety, as you can see. And, uh, yeah, it's not pretty, but it did sell for a hundred bucks. So, uh, again, it's a very scarce date, uh, of a two feather type of variety, and um, one that I've seen in the past sell for this kind of money. You know, this is like, this is normal for this thing. Here's a uh, silver certificate. And boy, man, you could blink and miss this one. Uh, this is a very minor misaligned overprint. Um, and how you know is that blue district seal that's right over Washington, D.C. on the right side is slightly higher than where it's supposed to be. Uh, and not to mention that that top right serial number is actually edging out the bottom of the word America. All right. So obviously that's normally a little bit lower. Again, this is very minor. Um, and one that I would challenge a lot of you look at, look at bulk lots of these at coin shops and shows because there are dealers that just don't give a care about notes like this. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, you know, it doesn't look like a, a whole lot here. You know, it doesn't look spectacular. You know, the price can't be that, that great. Um, well, I'll tell you what, it sold for $162 and 89 cents with 17 bits. Yeah. Do I have to repeat that? I, I'm not going to, but 162 bucks. For this thing uh and again this is one that admittedly i've probably overlooked some that are marginal like this so yeah i mean really really take a close look at your uh silver certificates and apparently it's quite a bit of a premium paid on this particular um uh, uh, piece of currency and uh the final one we we have to talk about this thing this thing is a monstrous monster the 1864 L on ribbon, Indian head scent. Check out the clash dies on both the obverse and reverse. When you look at the reverse of the coin, that is insane. I've probably laid eyes on, you know, maybe half a dozen clash dies that are as strong as this. And that's over the course of the last like 25 years. And uh, I'm telling you, this thing is monstrous. And of course, of course, Coins and Cards was the seller of this particular piece. You know, he uh, he or she has been throwing up some serious bangers over the last few years. Um, and they were all raw, nothing graded, um, just serious collector pieces. You know, that, that'll end up being appreciated outside of a graded encapsulation. This thing is nutty. 
And, um, you know, because of that, it sold for $600, six bills for 46 bits altogether. Uh, simply just a stunning piece, very visual, um, you know, kind of like just trophy. Um, and, and it's great to see it on a, a rarity, 1864 L on ribbon. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of how we're going to end things on this PCMR. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Information provided is not financial advice. Please always grade and collect responsibly, folks. With that said, I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hopefully this video gave you some inspiration to go out there and hunt, 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 hunt. In any which way possible, there are some huge coins to be found that nobody has even discovered yet. And you just never know. You could be that person to find it. You just have to go through the coin. I'm out of here, guys. I'm going to go do some roll hunting myself. You guys take care. Have a great rest of your evening. And I'll see you on the next coin video. So long.